Drive today. Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. It's time for our weekly segment with Max Olson of The Athletic. Brought to you by Pioneer Steel and Pipe, where customer service is their main focus and best in metal, steel, and pipe for large or small projects. With two locations in Waco and Bryan. Family owned and operated since 1943. Deep ball from Jefferson. Got him in stride. A touchdown, Arkansas. 85 yards. The 4 o'clock hour is sponsored by Boozer's Jewelers, the wedding ring store, specializing in custom jewelry and repair, all in-house. Now, here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. Max Olson, TheAthletic.com, one of the great national writers. College football joins us, Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports. Max, uh, how about Baylor, huh? I mean, 4-0, they got a hell of a test in Stillwater, but as you're watching that game in Iowa State, was there any kind of a deja vu, a little bit of 2019? Yeah, certainly. I, you know, super impressive win. Um, it, it's really, you know, and, and certainly – the thing that's so impressive in that one, especially when you know a lot of these Big 12 games are going to feel pretty 50-50 and come down to come down to final possessions and all that stuff. I thought the special teams, um, you know, and, and that the run back by Ebner there was just so huge. And, and you know, really uh, a credit to the staff for winning in the third phase there. But, man, one of those things that really stands out to me just watching Baylor over these years, um, you know, they <laughs> – they, these guys have done an incredible job of uh, with this offensive line. I, I've been so just so impressed. Um, not not just in uh, you know you, you knew it was like a, a more veteran group right now, but but just in terms of, of scheme and, and, and coaching improvement and all that stuff. Just so impressed by how that group has has uh, stepped up here over the last uh, you know over the last four games here uh, compared to where they were last year and even the year before. And uh, man, I'm I'm a believer. I, I think this Baylor team's got a chance to uh, you know re- continue to really surprise people and and you know. Can you eight, win eight, nine games? And, and honestly, I think with the way the Big 12 is looking like, I think that puts you in the Big 12 race for sure. Mm-hmm. Max, do you think that Arkansas is for real? And obviously, I know we'll, we'll know a lot more on Saturday when they play Georgia. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I love the way that they've played in these big games. You know, um, I, I think that the thing that uh, that wowed me was just in the second half against a and you know, when you lose the quarterback, you lose Jefferson. Um, and, and you knew that Malik Hornsby was not going to come in and throw the ball. Um, you know, just what a credit to their defense. Um, just to, to continue to hang in there, continue to get after uh, Zach Calzada. Um, and, and, you know, certainly a and that, that young offensive line uh, made life tough. But, but just so impressed by what Barry Odom continues to do with that defense. And, yeah, I mean, this week is, you know, I, I think that certainly <laughs> – as, as Shane Beamer made clear, you know, when you go line up against Georgia, it's, it's pretty unfair. But, um, you know, I, I just – again, like the, Chad Morris really bottomed that thing out over his, his two-year tenure there. And, uh, you know, as, as usual that, you know, um, Sam Pittman and his staff continue to really surprise people with just how quickly uh, they're getting everyone bought in there and getting it turned around. Max, how much of a change do you see in Texas since uh, the Casey Thompson move at quarterback? It obviously, just blew Tech right out of the water last week, and and now yeah. you know a TCU team that's owned them. But you know Gary Patterson trying to serve up some motivation in the media after the SMU incident. I mean, it seems like you know the Frogs need a win. Texas, you know, looking to cement that their forward progress. I mean, th- what do you think of this matchup? Yeah, it's it's always a weird one when these two play, especially these last two games that they've played against each other. Um, the one in Austin last year, really back and forth. A lot of weird stuff happened. The year before that, Ellinger throws a ton of picks. Um, and, and Duggan, to his credit, has played well in these games against Texas these last couple of years. But, um, man, it, it's like, <laughs> it, it, in terms of like the, with Texas, you feel like it's a little more glass half full than empty for sure it's after that kind of a performance. And, you know, as, as much as they've got some flaws, you, you watch them play and you're like, man, okay. They've got a really good play caller. They've got a, a phenomenal running back. They've got some good pieces here, and certainly they've they've now got a quarterback who's who's pretty confident. And 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 I think they've what they've kind of figured out in terms of their pistol offense. I think it is it, it, it's got some really nice balance to it. It's not going to be like that every week, obviously. But Tech was playing pretty good defense going into that one. So um, you know, I I want to think Texas can win this one, but it's TCU and uh, TCU just always gets up for this one. So it, it's going to be a phenomenal game here. Um, 
certainly a weird week in Fort Worth after after that last one. And and uh, you know TCU's uh, man, they got whooped in that game by SMU. Like they got to get a lot better. This week. Nobody rallies paranoia like Gary Patterson. Yeah, yeah. I know yeah. you. You can't. Yeah. I can't. I, I know. I know you. No, can. I'll just say. I mean, it's definitely a motivational tool that he's mm-hmm. using. It yeah. always happens after a loss, and right before a big yep. game. It's not even deflection. It's it's just a like he knows they need a wake up call ahead of Texas. Texas is playing well. TC is coming off of getting embarrassed by SMU, and you know he's going to use what uh, what ammo he has. At least that's the way I see it, Max. I mean, I'm, I think he's got a complaint to an extent, but I think you know it's more of a of a motivational thing. How do you see it? I think they just gave up 350 rushing yards in the game too. I mean, there's <laughs> yeah. there's, there's some stuff they got to go focus on getting fixed here, you know, and, and especially with um, what Bijan Robinson and Roshan Johnson can do. I mean, I think it's uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm certainly the important thing is I'm glad Jerry Kill's okay. I, yeah. I'm you know I was sorry to see that, and um, you know glad he's he's back to work, and 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 certainly that you know that part of it, that allegation after the game and stuff, you you, you worry about that, but. Um, the rest of it was just nuts to me. It really was. I mean, I, and, and it's, uh, you know, I don't know. The, the flag planting thing, you know, does that, like, offend me? Not really. I mean, that's, you probably should have waited a little later to do it, and not when everyone from TCU was still on the field, obviously. But, um, like, that whole thing was just, and the conspiracy theory of it was planned all that stuff, just, just wild to me and, and, you know, really unnecessary. But certainly that rivalry has gotten, gotten really spicy now that, that Sonny Dykes has got them really good. Mm-hmm. Max Olson, TheAthletic.com, with us on Sikkim 365 Radio. Max, do you think that, um, you know, the the transfer portal, we're starting to see maybe the true effects of it in that there is, there's not only parity across college football, that there's there's not really separation from the the dominant teams to the to the middle of the pack anymore. That there's that 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 window is getting a little bit smaller. Maybe this is a one-year phenomenon because of COVID, but, but are we seeing the true effects of the transfer portal right now? I think a little bit. I think for I think for some teams, um, you know that that you know I, I have had holes and stuff like that this off season. I think you, you, you've seen them do a good job of, of you know finding veterans. And I think the thing that people don't re- maybe totally understand about the portal thing, as much as you get you get so upset about the players going out, I think that the the smart coaches have looked at it as an opportunity to say, you know what, we can bring some leadership onto our team through through players in the portal. And and a lot of times, if you can add the right guys, not just as like starters, but you, you've seen a lot of these schools that are succeeding right now. They've brought in guys from the portal that are like captain level guys. You know, I think, I think that that part of it is, has helped a lot. I think in terms of not just filling your positional needs, but maybe you've got a younger team or maybe you need some guys that have, have, have real FBS, you know, starting experience that can kind of help guide your other players in your position group. I think that part's been huge for these teams. And, and you know, the thing that is a little scary though, is that look, you, you watch Alabama now, and they've got a linebacker from Tennessee, and they got a wide receiver from Ohio State, and uh, you know they're they're going to keep doing that too. I mean, they're going to keep adding really premium players every offseason to fill their needs. And uh, and from that standpoint, you know, I think some of those top programs, while they're going to lose blue chip guys, uh, they're also going to benefit from this quite a bit too. Max Olson uh, with us, Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports. So you have Cincinnati, Notre Dame is one of the better national games. There's a handful of others as well. Man, Notre Dame has looked – that was a great fourth quarter. They blew that game open with Wisconsin. Your thoughts about Cincinnati and, and what this could mean with them being a group of five for at least now until they join the Big 12? Yeah, I, I hope they can get it done this week. And I felt like going into the season, you looked at their schedule and you felt like, man, they really – I think they really do have a chance to beat Indiana, which you know was a little bit of a sloppy game for them, but they took care of business. And I, and I thought they had a great chance to beat Notre Dame. And, and yeah, certainly that, that 31-point – uh, fourth quarter from Notre Dame, you know, a lot of that thanks to Graham Mertz and Wisconsin's offense, but um, really strong finish from them in a, in a huge test for Notre Dame. But man, it would be so cool if Cincinnati can get it done. And, and, and you guys know, I mean, from watching this kind of this four team playoff era, um, you know, this is the kind of win you need um, for the, for the college football playoff committee to take you seriously. You know, the UCF didn't have one of these kinds of wins in the year they went undefeated. You know, Houston had that huge win over Oklahoma a couple of years ago, but and the huge win over Louisville, but they just they lost three games, and so they they couldn't be in the mix here. But when you talk to Bill Hancock and those kind of folks around the playoff, they've always said, you know, a group of five champ um, for them to get in the playoff, they need to have a really premium non conference win. So, I, I, and I think that's what this would be. I think Notre Dame is still going to be a top twenty five team, even if they lose it. So, 
man, you hope Cincinnati can do it because it, it would at least force the committee uh, to take the best team in the group of five level, um, you know, really seriously this year. Max, out of the Big Ten, Penn State and Iowa coming up on uh, Saturday afternoon. Uh, your thoughts on, uh, like, you know, somebody getting a little bit of a head in the Big Ten race? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a, a, an excellent matchup, and I think we're all still kind of trying to figure out, you know, just how good is Ohio State and and what are they going to be? Obviously, they they went to the you know they had to go with the freshman quarterback last week, um, you know, in, in another non con game and to get CJ Stroud healthy, and so. I, you know, do you look at the Big Ten and say it's wide open? I'm I'm not sure, but I, I think that if you know, I think Ohio State still got to fix some stuff on defense, and, and certainly, you know, I, I don't know that the Iowa offense is super inspiring, but but you know, they they know what they're doing, and then they've got a good back, and they've got a great line, and and uh, really interested to see what they can do. You know, certainly the thing that when when Penn State played Wisconsin, Wisconsin could not keep up with Jahan Dotson, um, you know, on those deep shots and stuff, so. Interested to see if Iowa's defense can, can do that. Um, but, yeah, I think that is a, a huge game and definitely a tone setter um, in the Big Ten, especially with just how good Ohio State has looked at times and, and, and certainly how good Michigan's looked so far. Max, I want to do a little hot coach's hot seat check with you. Uh, Scott Frost. Why are you asking yeah, him about I mean, me? How come you're not asking I, me? Yeah. <laughs> Smokey, they're an 11 and a half point favor against Northwestern. Oh, there you good go. God. There you go. They're not go capable of scoring 11, much less getting to beat somebody <laughs> by 11. That was, you know, they're, they're that, in the stretch here. They're yeah. in the critical stretch here where you've got Northwestern, you've got Michigan next, and you've got people here starting to talk themselves into maybe they can beat Michigan, which they can't. But, you know, you've got some of these winnable games here. I think, I think they've got Purdue and Minnesota after that in, in some order. So, you know, this is the stretch. The November schedule is totally brutal. And so this is the stretch where – you know, do, do you blow it against Northwestern? Do you get blown out by Michigan? Do, do you lose uh, one or two of these games that you were supposed to win? Uh, because it's all about getting a six for this team. That's the expectation here is getting a six and getting to a bowl, which they haven't done in a long time. And uh, so, you know, uh, this one this week is a must win. And, uh, you know, that's kind of, you know, since they blew it against Michigan State, they're uh, going to have to find a way to, to beat a, uh, a ranked team here on the schedule. Max, Mike, honestly, I was going to say I was going to ask him one more on the coach okay, hot seat. Okay, uh, Go ahead. Mike Mike Norvell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what what do you do there? You know, like I think it's I I, I think that punt. Um, it's it's just, and it's not all in really Taggart because obviously that thing was starting to crumble a little bit. Um, you know, when Jimbo left, but um, you know that <laughs> I don't I don't really know what to do. I, I don't I don't know that there's some coach out there. Uh, who is going to heroically show up and make them really good next year. I think it's going to be a long-haul thing, and uh, they need to show progress this year, obviously. Um, but it seems like, it, at least at Florida State, they're, they're committed and, and invested here. Um, you know, that's a, that's a team that tried to take a ton of guys out of the portal and fill their lineup with it and, and try and sort of expedite the rebuild, but but certainly they're not good enough. And uh, I'm curious to see when they get their first win. But, um, yeah, they're they're in, they're in bad shape, and, and – uh, I, I imagine that's that's probably going to be the case for a while, don't you think, Paul? Yeah, I, they got to hire a new athletic director first. That's the biggest thing. And until yeah. they do that, you know, they're not really going to hire a coach that's going to be any good. And, and with Mike Norvell and Willie Taggart, it feels like the building is on fire, and then two guys in a row have have started more fire. Like they're just, yeah. you know, it's just how it goes. So they yeah, the between guys that and Miami, there, there's oh. two jobs there that you just say, man, what what you know, what what kind of person has to come in there and get that right, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Max, I know we can't ask you about every game, but, man, there's a lot of good games this weekend. Uh, leave you with uh, Ole Miss, who has been lighting it up with uh, Matt Corral mm-hmm. and Jeff Levy with uh, you know the, the offensive t- uh, touch along with Lane Kiffin having some say in it as well. I mean, they, they are firing uh, on all cylinders offensively. But number one, Bama in Tuscaloosa. Your thoughts on the, on the Rebs in the Tide? Yeah, you know, Bama's kind of the dream killer. You know, that it, it's been fun to watch Ole Miss. I think their, their opening game against Louisville was a heck of a statement about just how good this offense can be. And, and, and they've looked really, really sharp. Um, you know, in, in when, when Corral has played, they've been, you know, definitely a top five offense, um, you know, just in what we've seen so far. Uh, and, and you know what? They, they ran for a lot of yards and put up a lot of points on Bama last year. So, you know, they, it gives you a little hope that, man, maybe they can make this a four-quarter game. And, you know, Bama's, you know, I guess, quote unquote, struggles with Florida give you that hope too. But uh, super fun game in terms of setting the Heisman race here with, with Bryce Young versus Matt Corral. I, I imagine Bama would win it, but man, I mean, I think that 
it, there haven't been certainly haven't been very many teams that have figured out a way to beat Bama in the regular season. Ole Miss did it a few times with freeze. Um, I, I think you know Ole Miss has got the right stuff, but I, I don't know if they've got a good enough defense to, to make this that close. Matt Wells. It, it, I'm, yeah, well. I'm adding adding to the what Paul was talking about with coaches on the hot seat. That I would saw, be a fun segment, just like throw yeah, out coaching yeah. names and uh, barometer on the hot level. Yeah, yeah. But, but well, that, I mean, that one was pretty hot at the end of last year. Um, yeah. And you know, he he uh, you know he dumped Yost and brought in Cumby and, and got to stay. And so um, I I thought they'd shown improvement up until up until last week. I, I didn't think they were going to get blown out like they did in Austin and. Uh, you know, in this, this super competitive Big 12, they're going to have to find a way to steal some wins. And, you know, the Shuck uh, collarbone injury is, is really bad luck, too. So um, I, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some pressure there. And, uh, you know, they got to keep showing progress. Max Olson. Thank you, Max. Uh, as always, Max Olson, theathletic.com, with us on Thursdays at 4 o'clock. We have Mickey Spagnola, then Craig's off the radar. Yeah, the Texas Tech, I mean, they got Columbia back at quarterback now. And, you know, there's some injuries going around, like Taj Brooks is out now, although they've got Sir Roderick Thompson coming back and uh, got a couple injuries on defense, including a starting safety, who's got the best nickname, name, one of them in all of college football, right? Muddy Waters. I mean, you can't get much better than that Marquise Muddy Waters, but he's out for the year now. So, yeah, that, that defense got exposed last week. I, I think Sarkeesian's going to do that to a lot of defenses. Like, maybe not 70, hanging 70 on people, but if you're not – quite what you think you are he's gonna hurt you you know what i mean and they kind of thought like maybe we got a pretty good little defense here and then clearly no not not quite at least not against ut but yeah that's that's a tough spot to be and with columbia there i said this in my little power rankings thing for the website it's basically the team from last year now like for all intent it's just last year's texas tech team again so uh, you know, take that for what it's worth, but he's got a big hole to dig out of like Max was talking about. All right. Thanks to Max. Mickey will join us next. The Cowboys with 